This is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of June 10th, 2019. The weekly top three is a regular segment on The Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on Facebook Live and via streaming audio from the show's website weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael on each week's Tuesdays show from 6.20 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud pages, and on my website at bgkeithley.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaska for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, where do we go from here on the budget? Our proposal? A 60-day budget to give the Alaska legislature time to finish the job. Second, we dis discuss how and why the congressional tool of a continuing resolution has become relevant to Alaska. And third, our thoughts on the Alaska legislature's so-called PFD working group. Our thoughts aren't positive. In some spare time tacked at the end of the podcast, Michael and I also talk about the current legal dispute over education funding. And now, let's join Michael. Good morning, Brad. How are you doing? Michael, I'm doing great today. How about you? You know, I, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. A little disheartened, a little uh, frustrated with the whole process, and uh, just don't know, um, you know, I just don't know exactly how to look at this whole thing. Uh, we're about two minutes out right now. You want to give us uh, any kind of initial thoughts here before we jump deep into the weekly top three? No, oh, I'm not ready to get depressed yet. It, it's it's on the governor. The governor has said he will use all options uh, to preserve, to, to make them follow the law, to follow the law, keep the PFD full. And he has options remaining. We'll, we'll go through them in the, in, in the discussion this morning. But th this, this battle is far from over. There was a skirmish yesterday. Uh, we lost the skirmish, but we're still up on the hill. We can see the battlefield, and this battle is far from over. Leave it to Brad to start using battle and warrior analogy to get me motivated again. I just, I love it that he knows exactly how to speak my language on this stuff. Uh, it is a fight, Brad. I mean, I'm not giving up, but I just, you know, I watch this and I just keep thinking. Sometimes I think these politicians are hearing what's going on, and then other times I'm like, these folks just... You know, they're just they're just not they're in such a bubble. They're in such a, a disconnect from the average Alaskan that I just I'm not sure that they're savable at any point. Well, they, the legislature, in fact, may not be savable. But again, we have a governor uh, and we have a very strong constitution that's put in the governor's hands. Um, and I think he's got he's got options now, whether he whether he plays those options is 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 a question. Uh, but he's got he's got options left uh, in this in this um, in this situation. Um, so let's take a crack at it. I mean, first and foremost, you had all this goings on the end of last week after we talked last. You have all the things that happened this weekend, and uh, you've been watching what's going on. And here we sit, no PFD bill, a fully funded budget from both the House and the Senate. Uh, obviously neither one match what the governor wanted to begin with and neither one include any kind of PFD payment. Where do we go from here? Michael, I think, I think we have finished part one of, of a two part and, and maybe, maybe a three part, uh, story. Part one is what's the legislature going to do, uh, when the ball, uh, is initially in their court. Um, and, and, and yesterday's yesterday's actions in the Senate because because of se certain senators you know backing up where they'd been before and and ending up the PFD issue in a 10 10 tie but in all honesty even if that bill had passed yesterday even if they'd got it out with an 11 10 vote it was going it had to go to the house and the house wasn't going to wasn't going to uh, approve it with a full PFD so right. we're, we're sort of at the 
we're, we're sort of at the end of part one. This is what the legislature is going to do on its own. They're going to not address the PFD issue, and they're going to come up with a they're going to come up with a with a fairly fully funded uh, operating budget. Now we go to part two. Part two is what's the governor going to do, um, and what's going to be the ramifications of that. And and the Alaska Constitution puts a lot of power in the in the hands of the governor. Uh, immediately when the Senate voted the way they did yesterday, uh, my first post was veto it, send it back. The the, the legislature has or, or indicate you're going to veto it, the operating budget, send it back. The legislature uh, didn't finish its job. It didn't it didn't address the PFD. It hasn't followed the law. But there are other there are other options, and, and put it right back in the legislature's hands. And the governor says, "Look, you know, we can play ping pong all day long if you want to, but I'm not going to sign a budget. And as long as I've got 16, we're not going to have a budget that that doesn't fully fund uh, the PFD. There are other options the governor can go to that, that we'll talk a little bit about in segments two and th- uh, in segment two. But one of them is to say, okay, you sent me a budget." I'm going to line item that budget, and guess what? I'm only going to fund. I'm only going to after I finish the line items. We're only going to have 30 or 60 days funding uh, for the for the coming year, and I'll send it back. And as long as there's 16 who will vote for it, that's the budget we're going to have. We're going to have a 60 day budget. You guys are going to go back and do this again, and we're going to keep this ping pong up until you do your job follow the law, and get a fully funded PFD. So this is – we finished part one. We finished the legislature. Now we begin part two. And it's really – the governor's got a lot of tools in his hands, a lot of ways to play this. Um, he had – in the rally in the valley last week, he said he will, he will use all means necessary to preserve a full PFD. He's got a lot of means to be able to do that. Um, and we're going to see – uh, in the hopefully in the coming days, because we don't need to we don't need to you know sp- spend months letting this play out. Hopefully in the coming days, we're going to see the governor use some of those tools, send it back to the legislature. He needs 16 in the legislature to uphold those vetoes, and and that is that's going to be critical. If he doesn't have 16, he's not going to be able to do this. But as long as he has 16 in the legislature that will uphold his reshaping of what the legislature has done so far in part one we're going this game this game is by is is not over yet by far now one of the things i hadn't considered and which is why the reason we love to bring brad on is because he always thinks about things that i don't because he's smarter than i am but he's you know is that 60 day you know, vetoing it down to a 60 day budget that's not a bad idea because again it averts the one thing that I think is on the horizon, I, I was considering that they were trying to pass this political hot potato of a government shutdown back to the governor, uh, you know, because up until now, it has been all on them all the time because they just haven't, they haven't performed. They haven't done their duty. They haven't done what they were supposed to do. And this was their way to kick, kick it back over, like you said, ping pong it back over to the governor and say, oh, well, now it's on him if there's a government shutdown. It's uh, you know, it's all on him. But this is a good idea. A sixty day budget. Say you got sixty days, kick it out, get it done, and uh, again, we could go back and forth all day long and I'll just continue to uh add another thirty days on it until you guys get your poop in a group and figure out exactly what you're gonna do. Uh and as I count it right now, they don't have near the sixteen they need for an override. No, you mean you mean they don't uh, the have other yeah for, they need for yeah I apologize they have more than the sixteen that they need to prevent an override yeah. is what I should have said yep yeah yeah no and I and 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 I think the I mean Bert Stedman said yesterday that that they have to decide the uh, the PFD by September one basically to get everything set up so that the chicks can go out in October um, so that's sixty days so the governor says. You guys have not completed your job. You haven't addressed the PFD. The, the PFD is in the law. You need to follow the law. You need to address this issue. Uh, it needs to be part of the budget. You don't have a complete budget. You haven't finished what you're what you're down there to do. I mean, it's it's the equivalent of let's say they didn't fund DOT or they didn't fund uh, the state police 
or they didn't fund fish and game, or they did they haven't completed the budget. Right. They've left out an entire budget item uh, in, uh, in, 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 in the course of budgeting. So the governor's going to say, the governor should say, you haven't completed your job. Now, we're not going to shut down the state. We're going we're gonna, to you know, let fish and game operate and, and keep commercial fisheries open. We're going to keep the police force. We're going to keep we're – not, we're not going to you know, kick people out of the pioneer homes. We're not, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. You said, you, Bert, you said September 1, you've got to have a PFD by September 1. Fine. We'll, we'll approve a budget till September 1. Um, and, and you finish your job. You said you you said you did till September right. 1. Fine. Right. You finish, you finish your job. Brad Keithley is our guest, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Brad, you know, the one thing you missed mentioning that they haven't also included, you said it's like this, it's like that. Hey, it's exactly like education because they didn't include education funding at all. So the argument could be again, hey, you didn't include education funding as well as a PFD. Your job is definitely not done. Yeah, th- this governor has said all along that he's going to wait until the legislature makes its offer, puts its puts its offer on the table before he responds. He's going to let the legislature go through their process. He's going to let them come up uh, with, w- with what it is they're going to propose, and then he'll act on it. Well, they've done that. Uh, they, they've done it poorly, but they've done it. And it's now on the table. And now the governor's going to act on it. We're in part two, uh, or we're about to enter part two. I mean, this task force, we'll talk about the task force in the third segment to the, uh, if we have time to get to it. But you're exactly right. This task force is a delaying tactic. It's not, it's, it's badly constructed. It's badly focused. It's not going to accomplish anything. It is, it is a way for some senators, LV being one, my senator being one, uh, to, to sort of, you know, oh, well, well, we'll address it in the task force. This governor needs to, this governor, I believe, will stand up and say, you have not completed your job. I'm not accepting some, some task force as your solution to this part of the budget. You've not completed your job. Bang, you're coming back on a special section. Bang, I'm only going to approve 60-day funding. And, and here we go, folks. We're, we're going we're gonna to keep it going until you do your job and follow the law. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I do like your idea, again, of a 60-day, of a veto down to the amounts of 60 days. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. It's Again, it's why we have Brad Keithley on the program every week to help us suss some of this stuff out because he's uh, he's watching a lot of these details and is, uh, always comes up with good ideas that I don't think of. Uh, Brad, that kind of – I mean, we really don't have that much more to say on what's going on other than now we're waiting. I said, As I said in the title of the show today, Big Mike steps up to the plate. It's all up to the governor at this point. So that takes us on to – I'm sorry? No, you're – you're exactly right. Okay, so that takes us up to number two, because I definitely want to get to number three today. Number two actually takes us outside the state, and you start asking about what is this continuing resolution we keep hearing about in the U.S. Congress? What exactly is this continuing resolution, and why is it important? We've discussed it on the show before, but I don't think you and I have ever really you know, taken a crack at it. So give us the reason why, and why is it important to Alaskans? Yeah, this isn't this isn't really a federal issue, Michael. This is this is this is the state approach. This is the state use of the federal approach uh, to keep state government going uh, while we, we we sort these issues out. Continuing a resolution at a federal level is when Congress has not enacted. They do the appropriations process a little bit differently. They do it in twelve bills. Some bills may may advance, get passed, get passed and signed by the president. Other bills might not. And rather than, uh, except last January, but, but rather than shut government down, what Congress will do is pass a continuing resolution and say we're going to fund for 30 days more or 60 days more or 90 days more. Uh, we're going we're to keep in place the spending levels we've had uh, for that additional period of time um, uh, in order to allow us to, to work through the, the, the remainder of the budgeting process. There's nothing in Alaska law that I've found uh, that present, that prevents us from doing the same thing. So another way the governor, uh, frankly, where my where my 60 day, 30 day, 60 day thought originally was, another thing the governor could say is, I'm not signing an annual budget. I'm uh, you guys have not completed your job. 
I will sign a continuing resolution. I will sign a bill that keeps funding in place uh, for 30 days or 60 days uh, while you finish your job. Um, and I'm going to veto and send the budget back. Now, probably because of all of the uh, uh, the internal pro- the internal work that would require, we're probably better off just the governor's better off just vetoing down to the 60 day level or 30 day level the bill he's got in front of him, as opposed to as opposed to asking for another bill, a continuing resolution bill. But the but the concept's the same. The con at the, at the federal level, the concept is. You pass a continuing resolution to keep funding going while, you, while you're finishing the budget items. Not a common practice, unfortunately too common a practice from a federal budget level, but a fairly common practice at the federal level, not a difficult, not a difficult practice to apply. Um, yes, uh, the, federal, the federal employees sit there, federal programs sit there wondering whether they're going to be funded, at what levels they're going to be funded, while that continuing resolution's in, in effect. Uh, and they're worrying about, you know, they, they, they want to get a full a budget for the full year uh, in place. That'll be the same issues that people bring up here. I mean, the school boards will likely go, or the, the teachers and, and, and the school boards and state employees will likely go, oh, my God, you know, I don't know if I'm going to have a job after 60 days. You know, you guys are... You guys are, you know, stretching me out at the end of a at the end of a string, and while you right. work out work work out these political issues, but that oh, it, it, it's it always works out at the federal level. I mean, that's just a way that we've adopted at the federal level to 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 extend the time when you when you can't get all the issues resolved to extend the time uh, to get them resolved. It's just, it's the same thing here. The, uh, whether we do it by vetoing down to a thirty day or a sixty day. Uh, budget and say, you know, you haven't completed your job, go do it. Well, I'm going to let you have, we're going to fund for 60 more days while you complete your job. Or whether he says, I'm vetoing the bill, send me one that's a continuing resolution for 30 days or 60 days. Uh, it's the same concept. Um, and, and that's, it, it's not, I mean, some people have said, oh, you can't do that at the state level. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing that prevents that at the state level. There's nothing in the Constitution that I've read that says, that these bills that, that you can't fund, I mean, there's nothing in the Constitution that says, for example, you can't fund um, uh, in, in 12 appropriation bills just like we do at the federal level. There's nothing in the Constitution that says you can't fund uh, in in 30 day, in 60 day or 90 day or 180 day uh, increments. There's nothing in the Constitution that says uh, that says that uh, uh, you have to you have to fund in any certain way. So, I this this process that we've adopted at the federal level. Uh, I think fully applies uh, is to the situation we face uh, at the state level. We've not got all the issues in the budget worked out, um, and 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 you know we need we need additional time to do it. We don't want to close the state down on July one. We do want a complete budget. We do want the legislature to follow the law. We do want them to do their job. Um, and so, fine, you haven't done it yet. Here's some more time to to get it done. Continuing now with Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets is the weekly top three. We were in number two, which he was comparing the Senate's continuing budget resolution at the national level to something that we could possibly do here. My only concern with that, Brad, is again, we've seen some abuse of that at the national level, and it's really created some bigger problems. I don't know if you want to address that just quickly on that as we move on to number three, but I think it at least worth mentioning that it could be problematic into the future. Oh, it, 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 I mean, there are problems created by it. You, you've got you've got inefficiencies. If you can only contract for thirty days or sixty days, if that's all the contractual authority you've got, you may not get as great a terms as you could if you could if you were contracting for a year. You're going to have people who are insecure about their jobs. You're going to, in, in our case, uh, if it affects education, you're going to have uh, uh, boards of education, school districts that are going to say, oh, my gosh, we don't know how to deal with this. You know, we usually have all of our funds at once. We can plan ahead. Now, if we can only plan 60 days, uh, we don't know what we're going to be able to – we're not going to be able to schedule uh, in the same – with the same certainty that we that we always can. I mean, there, there's going to be – there's going to be insecurities and there's going to be inefficiencies uh, created by the process, as, as there are uh, at the federal level. And, and it's not something, I mean, unfortunately, at the federal level, we've sort of seen this adopted as a, as a routine tool. And it's not something that I'm advocating that we adopt here. But here, we've got, in this situation, we've got a situation where the, the legislature has not completed its job. It has not appropriated 
uh, in all of the budget categories. It has not uh, 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 satisfied its obligation to follow the law with respect to the PFD. It's trying to get out of town with only having done, you know, 75 percent, some would say 50 percent uh, of the job uh, that, that was sent down there to do. Uh, and, and so there's, there's really, I mean, there's two alternatives at this point. Uh, well, three alternatives. One is to, you know, pray that the legislature will get religion and, and get it right before July 1. I think we've seen that's not going to happen. The second is to just shut down government at July 1. And I know there's a lot of concern about that. I know there's a lot of concern about what happens to the commercial fisheries. I know there's a lot of concern about what happens to corrections and to the police and, and to all sorts of things. And the third is to have this sort of continuing resolution or, as we talked about in the first segment, this sort of partial year funding um, uh, for, the, for the president while we, while we work out the remainder of the budget. I, it, there's really, I mean, it's not the world's perfect solution. The world's perfect solution would have been for the legislature to do its job and to and to follow the law, but the legislature didn't do that. So we're not dealing with the perfect world. We right. got to we got to do something else. Right. There's going to be cost to it, but we got to do something else. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Moving on to number three of the weekly top three, the working group, the task force, the study industry prospect for the PFD. Your thoughts on where we go from here on this, and what does it mean for us? Oh, I think this is a waste of time. I mean, it's it's a fig leaf that gave LV and Senator, Senator Gray Jackson and others the ability to say, "Oh, I didn't vote against the PFD. I voted for this task force. It's gonna it's gonna come up with a solution." Um, but it's but that's not a solution. I mean, it's unlikely the task force is going to come up with a solution if they don't have any pressure on them uh, to do it. Um, there's no if the governor would sign the budget if the governor allowed a full-year budget to go into effect. Uh, there's no leverage on that task force to do anything with respect to the PFD. Yes, we don't. We, we, we put at risk not getting PFDs this year, but there's, there's no leverage on the task force or on the legislature to, to fund a full PFD. They can fund a $1,600 PFD or a $1,000 PFD or Chris Birch's $900 uh, PFD, and there's, there's nothing really the governor can do about it. He could veto the bill, but that leaves you with a zero PFD. So this task force was just a fig leaf uh, to sort of give the give some legislators the ability to point at something uh, that that is supposedly going to magically solve the problem. The, the legislature needs to solve the full legislature needs to solve this problem if they want to have leadership, uh, which hopefully they've been doing. But if they want to have some in leadership or they want some designees to go off in a corner and try to come up with ideas for the legislature of how to do it, uh, that's fine, and, and this task force can go do that. But there needs to be pressure on the legislature, the whole legislature, uh, to come to, to a resolution uh, of the PFD issue. The second, the second problem I have with the task force is, frankly, it, all it is is, is a, uh, a mechanism to target the PFD as the as the new revenue opportunity, uh, and to say, and to say, well, you know, our our scope is confined to the PFD, so that, we, that means you know the PFD is going to have to be the shock absorber, to use one of Bert's early words, uh, the shock absorber to absorb any overspending we do, uh, and we're just going to have to figure out how to do that because we don't have any scope to consider other things. If we're going to resolve this state's fiscal situation, it needs we need to have everything on the table, not just the task force would need to have not not just the PFD, but they would need to have also uh, the spending, uh, the spending caps, because that's part of the problem. Uh, they need to be able to come up and say, we're going to have spending caps to stop uh, the runaway spending that we've had. And they need to be able to consider other options. If they're going to come up with a solution to the situation we're in, they need to have all of those options uh, in front of them, not just the PFD. Focusing the task force on the TF PFD really is just a way of saying we're going to put all of these problems on the PFD. We're going to solve all of these problems through the PFD, and that just means all the task force is going to do is figure out how deep the PFD cuts are going to be to be able to continue to continue to spend. If we were going to do a real task force, and this isn't one, but if we were going to do a real task force, it would need to have the tools to look at spending, look at uh, controlling spending, uh, in other words, 
the constitutional amendments dealing with uh, uh, spending caps, and it would need to have tools to deal with other options, um, uh, uh, potentially look at oil taxes, potentially look uh, at a flat tax, potentially look at a, at a sales tax, property tax, income tax, other, op- other, other income options, and come back with a package and says, that, that would say, this is how we're going to deal with the, uh, with, the, with the state's fiscal situation. But just narrowly confining it to the PFD is just a recipe for essentially asking Click Bishop and the others, how deep are the cuts going to be? How, how are you going to structure this so that the PFD takes the, takes the full brunt uh, of solving the state's fiscal situation? It's, it's a waste of time. It's a fig leaf. It's a delaying tactic, and it's not constructed uh, in a way that's going to come up with any sort of, of, of good, strong, durable fiscal solution for the state. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We're down to the last two minutes here, Brad, uh, or so, just under two minutes. Uh, what do we do? What? How do we? How do we support? How do we push this? What? What needs to happen from here? We need to support our. We need to recognize we've gone to part two. We finished part one. We're now in part two of this of this issue. It's on the governor's plate. The governor has huge powers to deal with this, and those who want to preserve the PFD need to support the governor in, in, in exercising those powers strongly to, get to, 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 keep this session, to keep this situation under control. And I think that means limiting uh, the, uh, the amount of time that, the, that he approves the budget, if he approves the budget, limiting the amount of time to 30 days or 60 days, Tell the legislature you didn't complete your job. Um, we're not going to shut down government. I'm going to fund it for 60. I'm going to take your budget and fund it for 60 days. But you didn't complete your job. Get your get get your behinds back here and finish the job. Finish out the budget. Follow the law. Uh, and I think I think we need to support. We need to tell the governor we, we will support him in that effort. And, and need to follow through and be very supportive when the governor undertakes that effort. Maybe I just mentioned education, Brad, and of course we're already seeing the hue and cry start. I see the ADN's got a story on it, and I think the Peninsula Clarion had a story on it as well, about woe be unto the pitiful teachers and all the administrators and all the uncertainty that this has created and all the problems and how could we do this, and it's for the children, and we're already seeing it now. It hasn't even uh, really gone out to court yet. Uh, what's your thoughts on the uh, what's your thoughts on this education funding snafu and the fact that it it obviously is going to go to court uh, when it's all said and done? Oh, I think I think the governor's got. I mean, certainly I have friends who disagree with this, but I have the I think the governor has the better part of the argument, and and the most compelling part of the argument to me, you've articulated it, I articulated it early on. Andrew Jensen's got a great editorial on it in the Alaska Journal of Commerce. Uh, I think the most compelling part of it is is if if the governor were if if the legislature were right about this, that they can forward fund uh, across uh, across governors that 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 the last legislature under a previous governor can forward fund um, and bind the hands of the next governor as long as the legislature doesn't change it. Um, what's to stop them from doing that for two years, four years, five years, ten years? A uh, hundred years, and, and Andrew went, went went as far as that, and and you know people who who have to who deal with that argument say, well, the legislature would never do that. The point that that's not the point. The point is they if you're right about the law, the legislature legally could do that. There's no constraint. You can't find a constraint in the Constitution that says, yeah, you could do that for one year, but you can't do it for two years, or you can't do it for five years or ten years. There's no constraint in the Constitution to do that. If you're right about the fact the legislature can forward fund in that fashion and bind future governors, not uh, take, a, take, take a, a tool out of the hands of future governors, um, then, uh, then, then there's, no limit. there's no limit on the, on the period of time they can do that. I, I, think, it's a, I think it's silly that the two are having. I think the governor made, it, uh, made the legislature's position absolutely silly when the governor said he would sign uh, a package, a funding package that uh, that was fully funded education to what the legislature had had passed it in the, in the last legislature. And, and so now this is just all about this, the, the, as some legislators put it, preserving their legislative power. Well, it, it's it, Excess power. Uh, it's it's more, more. I mean, legislators are great about saying, "Well, one legislature, one legislature can't bind, can't bind the next." Okay, granted, 
Uh, the Supreme Court has said one legislature can't bind the next. But now they're saying one legislature can bind the next governor. They can't they can't bind the next legislature, but they can bind the next governor. The next governor can be put in a position where he can't do anything about a budget that 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 is under his uh, under his term of office. And that I, I just don't think that's right. Well, and, and so what and what the legislature's doing, I think, is just is is really is being silly about about trying to preserve their their so-called power. Well, and technically, they would be binding over future legislatures because as it runs over the legislative split, you know, because the sessions always run for people out there that don't know, the sessions always run in two-year cycles. So a session is actually two years. And we've seen where it's bound over from one to the next where you get legislators that get new legislators in there. And technically, you are binding them over because if you do happen to run across a session split and run into the next session and say we're going to bind them over into the next session and you get a new set of legislators they're essentially bound their hands are tied their their vote their voice doesn't count in that so technically they'd be binding over legislators in the future which i think on its face is prima facie evidence that this is unconstitutional Mm, the, the the those who make the argument would say the legislature acts as a body it's the majority of the legislature that acts for the legislature. And so as long as the legislature had the subsequent legislature had the right to un excuse me, to undo uh that legislation, uh then 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 that you're technically not binding that legislature because that legislature could have undone, chose not to, but could have undone uh, uh that legislation. But what they're are what they're arguing what they're arguing is is not that. What they're arguing is is that they have the right to bind the next governor. That the governor can't undo what they've done, and even under their argument, the governor can't undo what they've done. The governor stuck with it because because they they approved it in advance. I, you know, to me, it's it's good for the goose, good for the gander. If 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 the legisl- if one legislature can't bind another then we shouldn't have a situation in which one legislature can bind the next governor or one governor can bind the next governor. It, it's, it's, it's either, yeah. <clears throat> either each legislature stands on its own, each governor stands on his own, uh, or, or, or gosh, I don't know where we go then. But, right, absolutely. But it, we- it's, it's, it applies both to the legislature and the governor. Well, again, more proof positive that we need to change the players as many as we can as quickly as possible. Any final words of wisdom for our Facebook crowd this morning, Brad, as we head on out the door? No, Michael, I, I you know, I, I know, I know it's not perfect, but we are not at the end of this game. We are not at the end of this game. All we've done is finish part one. The, the legislature has, has droned on for God only knows what, 150 days. We're approaching 150 days. They've, they've, they've droned on and on and on, and this is what they've come up with. They've come up with a half-baked solution. Okay, that's the legislature's offer. The governor has said all along he'll let the legislature put the offer, put an offer on the table, and then he'll consider where we go from there. Well, we've done it. We've finished part one. The legislature's come up with it. Now it's up to the governor. And I, I there, this governor has, any Alaska governor, has a tremendous number of tools, uh, and the way he can come in and line item veto a budget uh, by time, by 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 uh, uh, spending category, the way he can come in and slice and dice a budget gives him a tremendous number of tools, and and I think this governor, I think this governor is creative. Uh, I think he will be creative in this situation, um, and, and I and and I think not over. A lot of tools left, a lot of game left to go uh, before this issue is solved. So I'm not, I'm not impressed. I mean, as a my political junkies listen to me talk, and they get all excited because they, wow, this is going to be, you know, fun for 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 political junkies about how this is going to play out from here. Um, I, we, we, we are not done. This issue is not over. The legislature didn't do its job. They need to follow the law, and this governor has the tools to make them do that. Well, I hope you're right, and uh, and like you said, I mean, I'm not a junkie per se, a political junkie per se. I mean, I'm an observer, but I am reaching that level of frustration with this group of people. And, and the more I see this, the more we talk about it, the more we um, 
you know, the more, more we have this kind of stuff going on, the more I realize that we need to get the legislature out of Juneau and onto the streets so that people can have a chance to have access to them because they are completely disconnected from what Alaskans, I mean, just Von, Von Imhoff. I mean, I know she's in her own little bubble inside of a bubble because she has her own sphere of influence thing going on, but just just an example of one thing where people are just completely out of touch with where Alaskans are at uh, because, you know, they say, oh, they say everybody's focusing on the PFD. No, they're not. We are. And I'm just like, wow, you are completely out of touch and, and ignoring all the road signs that are saying bridges out ahead. You may want to pay attention to that. Yep. And, and the governor has the tools to make them do that. I mean, the legislature tried to take a victory lap yesterday and say, oh, we, we, we accomplished this. We accomplished that. We've got we've got all these cuts done. We've done we've done a great job. We ought to be proud of what we're doing. No, you shouldn't. You didn't finish your job. And the governor and the governor has the ability to call him to task and say you didn't finish your job. And the governor, the governor has the tools uh, to bring them back, to make them force reality, to, to, to bring them out of their own world, not only not only by putting them on the road system, if they'll stay. I mean, they've talked about going back to Juneau, even if he tries to put them on the road system. Not only by, by putting them on the road system, but also by making them face the reality that they're not going to get away with doing a half, half their job, that, that they've got to complete their job or we're not going to have a budget. We're not going to have a budget until they complete their job. We're not going to have a budget until we have a whole budget. We're not going to do this piecemeal approach that they've tried to do. Well, and by line item vetoing it, if he took it down and line item vetoed the entire budget line by line down to the 60-day mark on a percentile basis, um, I mean, that's a way to do it. I mean, that takes us right to September 1, which Stedman says is the uh, deadline for a, for a PFD, whether fully funded or not. That's the day, drop-dead date that they have to have to put all the pieces in place. Um, a 60-day a veto of down to just 60 days worth of budget would be a way to get things done, and it would put it back to the uh, legislature and, again, put the ball back in their court. I think, you know, quite honestly, it's a brilliant maneuver, and hopefully the governor has considered it or is hearing, uh, you know, from folks out there or, so, you know, somebody's listening to this show to hear that this is an idea that could be played out. And, again, I think, uh, you know, as far as politics, the political hot potato then being passed back across the net to the legislature uh, is a good message, and I think sends a sends a message. As long as uh, we have those sixteen plus stalwarts who are willing to back the governor up, which, uh, according to my count, we do right now. Um, but we'll we'll yeah. have to see how it plays out. Some people have said we wouldn't have sixteen if it meant closing closing government on July one because there'd be concern about the impact on on a wide variety of things. But what a sixty day what a what a veto down to sixty days does is deal with those issues, and hopefully any who would be skittish about upholding a veto if it meant closing down on July 1 will be comforted by the fact that we're giving the legislature the, the time to finish its job. Um, and so I, 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 I think, I, I firmly think that we hold those, hold 16, maybe 20, maybe, maybe more uh, on, on that, because there are that many, when you look at the, at the House minority, 15, and you look at the 10 who continually vote for the PFD in the Senate, that's 25. Right. Um, so I, I, I think I think we've got 16 to, to be able to do that. I hope so. I hope you're right. Brad Keithley, thank you, my friend, for coming in and joining us. Michael, as always, thanks for having me. Appreciate uh, you coming on board and being part of the program. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the Weekly Top 3 from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube and SoundCloud pages and keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.